So it seems to me that when people are thinking about generation, whether it's wind turbines or water turbines or whatever it is, the first thing to go to is a DC brushed motor or some kind of magnet and coil arrangement. To be honest, that's not always the best answer. Magnets have a fixed field strength and so there's a fixed amount of torque that you have to put on whatever it is you're turning to move it through those magnets. So sometimes, like wind for instance, the wind doesn't blow that hard. So what would be really great is if you could adjust that torque requirement or adjust the magnetic field strength so that in low wind conditions, well, you had a low field. And in high wind conditions, well, you just up the field so you get more generation out of it. That, to me, would be a huge benefit. Because magnets, particularly neodymium magnets, are really expensive. I was reading a chap who was doing one out of neodymium magnets and he reckoned because he was using neodymiums his payback period was going to be something like 44 years. No, oh, that's crazy. Because they are expensive, they come from China, we're just coming out of Covid and we've got a crisis in delivery around the world. So they're expensive. To get away from using those magnets then I think there are real definite positive benefits to that whole arrangement. And in 1502 we did something about that. We started to talk about car alternators. Now, car alternators aren't that expensive. You can buy a brand new one um, without a trade-in for something like 80, 90 pounds, something like that. However, if you're like me, what you prefer to do is pay absolutely nothing and have reasonable generation so that your cost per kilowatt hour drops through the floor. That's what we'd be looking at. Now, what I've got here is a washing machine motor. Now, in quite a lot of Europe, these washing machine motors are something called a universal motor. It means they'll run off AC or DC. And what they are is a set of field coils right here in the stator. There's a whole bunch of coils. And in the rotor, there's a whole bunch of coils fed by these two brushes here. Now, we can use that in the same way that we did with the alternator. That is, we can put little power into the magnet coils to create a magnet. As long as we're turning it, we're going to get more out than we put in because we're turning it. We're putting more energy in. And so we can store some of that energy that comes out into something like a, a feed battery or a supercapacitor and feed that back into the field coils to improve the strength of the field. Of course, if we link that with an Arduino, we could have some measure of the speed using a tachometer of some kind and use that as a signal to change that magnetic field strength. So the field strength was low when the torque applied was low and the field strength was high when the torque applied is high. So when you have a low wind condition, you can turn it. When you have a high wind condition, you can turn it and generate more. And if it gets crazy wind condition, where well, you can feed a load in and break it. So there's a whole load of reasons you might want to use something like an alternator, but it's still a hundred quid and a washing machine motor. Well, in the last month I've found three just lying by the side of the road and they're perfectly good motors. Now the issue with them is they have this clip here, which has got loads of really weird little connectors and you start to worry about where everything goes, but it's actually really simple. We can see right there, there's a green and a yellow one. They go to the brushes, and those brushes go to the rotor. We use those two. Here, we've got one going into the body, and there are three wires in there, a brown, a black, and a white. There's a heat sensor in there. The heat sensor is just a bimetallic strip, and it'll turn it off if the motor gets too hot. Well, we don't need that. So we just find the two wires where we have continuity, and they are gonna be the two we use for the field coils. The other wires are just various sensors that we don't actually need, so ignore them completely. Now I'm gonna make those adaptations and show so you. So there is the stator with its two coils right there, and there's the three wires, and you can actually see the sensor right there. It's a heat sensor. I checked continuity between the brown and the black, and we've got about 2.08 ohms resistance, and they're going into those two coils. So I plan on feeding a voltage down there to create, essentially, two permanent magnets. The reason I'm doing that is here is the rotor, and we've got a commutator there. So remember, when a rotor like this moves between a permanent magnetic field, what we get is DC out, because there's commuta the commutation performs a rectification. So we don't need to worry about AC coming out. DC is going to come straight out. And of course, in washing machines, there's the brush. These brushes are meant to be replaced, so they're really easy to get to and really easy to change over. And what's more, this thing 
It's got a coating of plastic on it because it's a washing machine motor. So brilliant for outdoor use. Anyway, now I've shown that to you, let's put it back together. Okay, so we've got our washing machine motor in this test rig that we developed in video 1503. Incidentally, if you swap the feed around, you'll swap the magnetic poles and you swap comes out. So you can just test that to see which one comes out. Here we've got a positive voltage coming out. So if I spin this, of course, it's going to generate. There we go, light our load, a couple of volts coming out. Now, I'm being a bit careful with it because I blew the last one up, remember. However, alternators aren't actually that well made. They're a bunch of, uh, of cast iron, they're put around a magnetic field, and they don't have a lot of magnetic remnants. However, this stuff here is a silicon steel, and its magnetic remnants is really strong. <coughs> So, we can get rid of the power supply. Let's do exactly that. And now we're going to use a self-feed mechanism. So, when we take the output from the coils, which is the rotor output, and we feed that back into the field coils, which is the stator, then that rotor will act as a positive feedback mechanism, feeding the stator and building the magnetic field. Okay, so I've wired it up now so that the rotor field feeds the stator. So anything that's generated actually goes into the field coils, become its own load. It's a bit harder to turn, but it will now have a positive feedback mechanism. And I put this LED strip on, turn on voltages for that. It's about 20 <laughs> volts. It's a bit of a harder turn, but there we go. So, using its own magnetism, its remnant magnetism, to start that process, it can generate quickly enough to light this. But it is a harder turn, so you do lose the control that you would have over this when we can feed in a lower voltage to control the torque. This becomes its own resistance. Surprisingly enough, universal motors actually make pretty good generators, whether you feed them with a separate supply or you feed them with their own remnant magnetism to beef up that supply. And they're really easy to get hold of. <laughs> Most washing machines have them in. There's a, a tendency at the moment for um, brushless DC motors in washing machines, but they're pretty rare to find. I have seen a couple around. These, you just pick them up, no worries at all. And put them in the test rig, obviously, you can work out all those kind of things that you need to work out in terms of gearing and give that a go and see if you can actually make a decent generator. Now, motors themselves have a, an efficiency rating. These kind of motors are sort of the 75% efficient range, somewhere around about there. The generation is dependent on the motor efficiency as well as the efficiency that this can capture in terms of mechanical effort. So you have two sides to be looking at. One is how well your mechanism captures the mechanical effort of whatever you're using, so wind or water. The other side is how well this can convert that mechanical power that's going in through this belt into electrical power. So these are, I think, well worth investigating, particularly with that torque control that we can add in there. Anyway, I thought I'd point out universal motors as a possible replacement for alt alternators. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.